Hey, Browns fans, Nathan Zagura alongside the Hoff Hall of Famer Joe Thomas. And it is time now for another edition of Training Camp Insider presented by Snapple. We're in Philadelphia where the Browns and Eagles just had the first of two joint practices. Joe, what did you see? Well, it was exciting watching the Browns practice against somebody with a different color helmet. And these Philadelphia Eagles, as you all know, they played in the Super Bowl last year. They are stacked, especially on that defensive line. I followed the offensive line around most of today's practice, and there were some great battles out there. I think it was a very even day, a lot of battles. No and I'd say overall, the defenses on both sides got the better of the day. And when you think about the stars that are along that Eagles defensive front, and now the Browns with Miles, Zadarius, Oboe, Dalvin Tomlinson, Shelby Harris, there weren't a lot of plays when they got to those team periods that couldn't have been classified as sacks. Both of these defensive fronts really got after it. Yeah, when you're not game planning, it always favors the defense a little bit, but those defensive lines on both sides were very dominant. I had a chance to talk with Lane Johnson and Jordan Mailata towards the end of practice, and they both came up to me and go, dude, you retired at the right time because there's no way you wanted to see Miles Garrett week in and week out when you're practicing against him. And I couldn't agree more because he was dominant out there. Both those guys said that he's the best guy that they've seen in the NFL, and he showed it out there today with the power, with the speed. He was completely dominant and unblockable the entire practice. Yeah, and Zadarius was right there with him, that ability to turn his speed into power and just push big men back towards the quarterback. I thought that was so impressive. Yeah, what those defensive ends can really do in Jim Schwartz's scheme is they can really push the pocket because Jim doesn't say, hey, you got to look at this gap and then watch the run and this and that. He says, no, I just want you to be disruptive. I want you to go forward. I want you to stop the run on the way to the quarterback. And when you got a Miles Garrett and a Darius Smith on the other side, that's exactly what those guys do. They constrict the pocket, they make things uncomfortable for the quarterback, and they make that clock tick a little quicker in that quarterback's head. Yeah, it was a great day for the Browns defense. One of the big highlights, Denzel Ward with a huge interception off of Jalen Hurts. So you like to see that, some of those sacks we mentioned. But on the other side, while the Eagles defense did a good job, especially in that final team period, Deshaun Watson had some nice balls and that connection between he and Amari Cooper and Deshaun and David Njoku who certainly was on display today. Yeah, we saw a lot of follow through from what we saw in the <laughs> Commanders game. We saw Deshaun Watson making good decisions within the pocket, understanding when it's time to sit tight, throw the football within the rhythm of the offense, and then when it's time to take off, get outside the pocket, and use those legs that we all know so much about it. And he did a great job getting out of the pocket and hitting some deep throws to his receivers, especially down the sideline. He hit a long one to Schwartz. He did. In the middle of practice, just showing off that explosive ability he has later in the shot clock. Yeah, they're going to have to do a little bit better on kind of ball control. There were some ball handling issues on a couple of plays with Nick Chubbs where the ball ended up on the ground. I'm sure Kevin Stefanski says we can't have that anymore. You just mentioned the Washington Commanders game. Well, just as he did in the Hall of Fame game, Dorian Thompson Robinson was electric in that Washington Commanders game. Nine of ten passing. He threw a touchdown to David Bell as well. And moments ago, the Hoff caught up with DTR here in Philly. Have you seen that the tempo here is a little bit different now that they've got another team that you guys are practicing against? Yeah, for sure. It's more it's supposed to be like a game atmosphere anyway. So for us to go out here, get reps against another scheme, uh, different players, different skill sets, uh, I think it'll serve us well. So. You didn't get a whole lot of reps today because they were focused more on the ones and the twos. It was a shortened practice. But you've been one of the darlings of the preseason playing an exceptional in the Hall of Fame game. I was sitting in the stands drinking some Coors Lights at the time, but I was in the booth for the game last week. You followed up a great Hall of Fame performance with another great game against the Washington Commanders. Where is your progression going from week one in the NFL, and how much more comfortable did you feel in week two against the Commanders? Uh, yeah, definitely a lot more comfortable. Um, obviously, once you get the first one out the way, you know what to expect going into the next one. So um, I think that was the biggest thing for me. Uh, I now have a routine and, a, and uh, know how to get around on game days and everything like that. So uh, I definitely was a lot more comfortable. What's been the hardest thing about learning that new routine on game day? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's all new. Um, I barely knew how to get around the building, barely knew where the locker room was. So um, I think that's just it. Just uh, kind of, like I said earlier, finding my role. Um, making sure that uh, I can just be an asset for the team and part of that is finding uh, how to get around the building. So It's always good to know where to go, I guess, around the building so you're not late for those meetings. But you and Deshaun Watson had a little bit of a relationship before you got here. How much has he meant to you as a mentor to kind of help you get yourself indoctrinated and used to being a Cleveland Brown? Yeah, I'm super, super, super grateful for Deshaun as well as the rest of the quarterbacks. Um, they've been uh, tremendous in helping me uh, not only learn the playbook, but just learn how to be a pro quarterback. And uh, I get to watch them firsthand, front row seats every day. So um, just trying to take every little bit of their game and add it into mine. And 
uh, try and pick their brand as much as possible. So. It's only two games in the preseason, but there's something about him. I felt it when I got a chance to talk to DTR for the first time. I know you felt that as well when you got to talk to him right there. As a former left tackle, what do you like about what you're hearing from that young quarterback? Just being around him, you feel that presence that great quarterbacks have. Like every great quarterback that I've ever been around at the Pro Bowl or just meeting throughout the league, they have that presence, that leadership where even though he's a rookie, I felt myself standing up a little bit straighter because he commands that respect with how he carries himself and how he performs in practice and on the games. He's played so well in the preseason, over 80% completions. He's led the Browns on three touchdown drives of more than 75 yards. So if you can find that in the fifth round and maybe he becomes the backup of the future, that's a pretty good job by Andrew Bear. But so far, the early returns are quite positive. It's amazing because as a fifth-round quarterback, you really don't expect him to be able to make the reads and the decisions as quickly as he's been doing. But that's the thing that impresses me as a lineman the most is he gets back in his drop and he's making decisions quickly on whether to throw the football or like Deshaun does, try to find his way and get outside the pocket and use those legs to extend the play. And typically, rookie quarterbacks, they're just trying to figure out where to line up, what the snap count is, and they get back there. And if the first read isn't open, a lot of times they're dirting it or they're throwing it out of bounds or they're running around and taking a sack. But he looks calm and cool and collected like a six-year vet. And part of it, I think, is he played so much football at UCLA. He holds every record in UCLA's history. But we talked about what he could do on the field. Let's take a little snippet, a little peek behind the scenes with not only DTR, but his high school teammate, Cedric Tillman. I know you guys talked about that, Huff, in this week's episode of Unleashed. Cedric's my best friend, both on and off the field. You get those guys, they have familiarity with each other. They've worked together their whole lives. We're in the league now. No, I'm you need to work on your fight. celebrations you when you score. Me and Dorian have known each other since we were little kids, and I was like, man, here we go again. Looking forward to being in the stadium for the first time, actually playing in front of the uh, fans, of the great fans we have, and uh, you know, just getting used to my new home. You know, like I said, it's always cool to have a lifelong friend with you. We're always by each other's locker, joking and laughing and stuff like that. Uh, I guess that's why people think we're brothers, but we're not related. <laughs> It's a dream come true for sure, but there's a lot more in store. There's a lot more that I want. I haven't been able to take care of my family yet or anything like that. So for me to uh, finally get to that point, and uh, I, I think I'll be good there. We are back in the booth here at Cleveland Brown Stadium. Much anticipated. Both teams are over on their sideline, and we're ready to go. All right. Before we get into what I want to see or what you want to see tomorrow here in these joint practices, let's set a little bit of injury news for you. Elijah Moore did not practice today with the ribs, so he was not out there with the Browns' first team offense. And over the course of practice, we saw Jack Conklin, Miles Garrett, and Denzel Ward walk in with the trainers. We don't have updates on them at this time. But, Joe, that's a part of this. This physicality ramps up. You're going to get some of those nicks and bruises. And quite frankly, all three of those guys, wrap them up. We'll see you week one against Cincinnati as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, these joint practices always make you a little bit nervous as a fan and as a coach because they are physical. They're probably more physical than when you're just practicing against yourself at home because it means a little bit more. There's a little bit more pride on the line, not only for the players, but the coaches that are sure. coaching the players because they got to go to those coaching clinics and they got to see those other guys. So there is a little bit more intensity in these practices and you do get nicks and bruises, but hopefully because those guys walked off Everything is going to be all right. You'd never want to speculate on injuries, but those are obviously key components that we probably won't be seeing tomorrow at tomorrow's practice. I'll tell you, the one thing, though, that made me feel the most comfortable about this team is that if you think about maybe last year, for example, if Miles Garrett leaves the field, we don't really have a pass rush. That was just the reality of the situation. That's why Andrew Berry overhauled this defensive line. Today, after Miles had already left field, also with no Denzel, that's when they did the move the ball period, and the Browns got back-to-back -back sacks to get off of the field without Miles. When you think about Zedaris, he's a three-time Pro Bowler. Oboe had five sacks you know, in his last seven games. This is a different team now in terms of the depth and its ability to get the quarterback in. When Miles isn't out there, I thought that really was the big takeaway for me today. It's going to be so important for them when Miles is on the sideline because he's not going to play every snap. Right, can't. They need to be able to still rush the passer because the one thing you don't want to have happen is to have that assistant standing next to the offensive coordinator and he has a whole line of plays that says, when Miles isn't in the game, we're taking these shots because that hurts you as a defense so much because you're so vulnerable not having that pass rush, not being able to force the quarterback to throw the ball on time. That's just not the case anymore, and that's a beautiful thing. Not only the additions of those new players that can rush the passer, like you mentioned, but Jim Schwartz's defense gets 
every drop squeezed out of the lemons and the oranges that he has out there because he's allowing those guys to unbuckle the seatbelt like we heard Zadarius say in the game against the commanders and get after the quarterback until they're tired and then they can rotate somebody else in and the Browns have the luxury of being able to rotate people in this year. All right, you mentioned that Zadarius in the commanders game real quickly there unleashed. How does that play go in a film room for a tackle when that happens, when you get a safety for a holding in the end zone when Zadarius is basically just taking you to the woodshed? So you're nervous all morning. You can't eat breakfast because your stomach hurts. And then you're sitting in that meeting room puckered up like this going, please, please, God, this needs to be over soon because you know you're going to get it. It's humiliating. It's like watching yourself on TV when you do something really, really bad. It's really hard to watch. It's painful, but it's part of the process. And when you're going against a three-time Pro Bowler like Zadaria Smith, he's going to win his fair share of reps. Yes, it was a good day for him in the film room. Let's talk about the film room after one of these joint practices. Obviously, coaches, front office, everybody kind of considers this some of the best tape the starters will get in the entire preseason process. So what are these film review sessions like after these joint practices? They're going to be really important because they're going to have an opportunity to dissect every little detail detail since they don't practice again until tomorrow night. Yep. So you've got a full day of walkthrough and meetings to really nail down all the little details that you, and the nuances that you want to hammer home. And going against different guys in practice is huge because yeah. you get a scouting report on the guy you're going against and you keep a book on that guy and you start to learn each well, other. Well, Hoffs do. Well, well, all right, hopefully you pass well, hopefully that on to everybody else. Many right. of the teammates out there right now do. But you really start to understand their strengths and weaknesses and it becomes overwhelmingly the curve – skews towards stalemate but all of a sudden you're going against different guys who are bringing different skill sets different strengths different weaknesses and it makes your yourself a better player because now they're attacking your weaknesses the way your teammate wasn't during training camp now you have to elevate your game to get better to be able to go back tomorrow in tomorrow's practice and be able to hold your own against that opponent yeah, so tomorrow is kind of where we come up with the counterpunch. A lot of times they say in games that happens at halftime, we know that's maybe a little overblown as a media narrative, all the in-game adjustments. But, you know, you have an opportunity to go against the same team two days in a row. I'm curious to see what adjustments our offense will make, what adjustments their offense will make, because as I said, both defenses I thought had good days. How does that process go about, and what do you expect to see from our offense tomorrow? Yeah, I think you're going to see schemes that, aren't really crazy either it's not like they're going to change the schemes all that much like you would in a game sure but what you're going to see is i think a lot of those individual matchups the coach is going to say hey hey dewan i want you to instead of sticking this hand out there because this guy's knocking that inside hand down maybe flash that hand and then let him trigger his move and then you can snatch him up it's those little in-game intricacies those one-on-one battles that i think really change a lot from day one to day two because you see how the person you're playing against wants to play you and it plays out a lot in, in one-on-one pass right It plays out a lot in some of those individual run drills where you're blocking the same guy over and over again. And that's really what's fun for me to watch, to be able to go stand there behind the offensive line and see that progression, see where those guys' minds are from day one to day two, because that really replicates their ability to learn and grow throughout the course of a season. It's going to be exciting. We'll be back with you for full coverage of the joint practice after Tuesday's practice here in Philadelphia. As always, for the great Joe Thomas, I'm Nathan Zagura saying thanks for watching another edition of Training Camp Insiders presented by Snapple.